AMD just announced their Ryzen 7000 lineup and as a bonus teased their upcoming RDNA 3 discrete desktop graphics cards. We got information for specs, pricing, platform availability and of course benchmarks comparing the new Zen 4 architecture to the current generation Zen 3 and Intel's 12900K. But the unlikely thing that got me most excited was the fact that AMD are finally giving in to my lifelong request. To touch me. We are really touching everyone. So strap on. I mean, strap in, and let's break down everything that you need to know about the launch and why you should be excited. Let me explain. So I have a question. Are you an avid PC enthusiast stuck with that ugly ass Windows watermark ruining your gaming and streaming experience? Well, I have great news for you. WhoKeys is a software licensing website dedicated to getting you affordable keys. And the best part is you can get rid of that watermark in a matter of minutes. All you need to do is head down to the video description, click the sponsor link and enjoy an additional 25% off using my coupon code TL20. With PayPal checkout and quick key delivery, all you need to do is hit the Windows key, type activate and paste your key right here to become fully activated. It really is that simple and that cheap. So head down to the video description if that sounds right for you. And thank you Hookies for sponsoring this video. With all of us eagerly waiting Dr. Lisa Su's entry, the theme of the announcement was advanced, the world's most advanced processors. And since the launch of Ryzen back on March 2nd, 2017, AMD have come an extremely long way, arguably shaping the industry into the high core count and fierce competition we're currently in. But are they going to deliver? Well, with four different architectures and over a dozen new products entering the market, Zen 4 will cover server, desktop and notebook, while RDNA 3 has graphics covered. However, we will also get Zen 4 C cores, optimal for lower frequency cloud compute and XDNA adaptive SOCs. They state that this is at a pace of innovation that they have never done before. It's more than we've ever done before. So with that many new products, AMD really want to make a welcomed advance and consensually touch you too. Touching billions of people every single day. But hold on now. Let's find out if you actually want to be touched by these products. Starting out with the impressive Zen 4 CPUs. <laughs> Jumping straight into the core topic of the announcement, the upcoming Zen 4 processors will be available on September 27th, and all Zen 4 CPUs will be manufactured using TSMC's 5 nanometer process, and will be the first products from AMD to feature AVX 512, DDR5, and PCI Express 5.0. Though not all motherboards will support the new PCI Express standard in the same way. More on that in a bit. But when it comes to performance, AMD are stating that Zen 4 will have a healthy 13% IPC increase over Zen 3, by the geomean of games and applications shown here. So with better branch prediction, more cache and other architectural tweaks, the other contributing factor to performance is frequency. And AMD's clocks are looking really impressive. They're increasing the max frequency by 800 megahertz at the top end of the stack, reaching a whopping 5.7 gigahertz on the five nanometer process. This means that comparing the 5950X to the upcoming 7950X, AMD claims that you should see a 29% single thread performance gain, leading to a 15% increase in gaming performance compared to their previous flagship. And although they didn't give any specific numbers comparing to the 12900K, they did show impressive single threaded Geekbench results and stated that the 7950X is faster across a wide range of games, whatever those are. But highlighted Dota 2, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Borderlands 3 and CSGO all running at 1080p. But even though that's comparing flagship to flagship, it's the lower end that's actually far more interesting to me. So let's cover each of the four CPUs they announced, starting with the cheapest. The Ryzen 5 7600X comes in at the same $299 price tag and has the same six core 12 thread setup. In fact, if you were looking for more cores this generation, that isn't the case. Every model has the same cores and threads as its predecessor. However, they do have impressive clock increases. The 7600X's max boost was increased by 700 megahertz to 5.3 compared to its predecessor and the cache gets a small bump along with the TDP increasing from 65 watts to 105 watts which is actually the same as a 5950X. AMD claims that this allows a mainstream and much more affordable 7600X to beat Intel's 12900K flagship by an average of 5% in games and showed a side-by-side -side comparison of a 7600X beating the 12900K by 11% in F1 2022 running at 1080p high preset. The next Next is the 8 core 16 thread Ryzen 7 7700X, coming in at $399. Although this is an increase of $100 compared to the 5700X, in all fairness, that launched at the same price as the 5600X 18 months after. But the upcoming replacement is now boosting to 5.4 GHz, up from 4.7, with more cache and the same 105 watt TDP as the Zen 4 Ryzen 5. But then we get to the high end Ryzen 9 CPUs. 
Both of these have the same 12 and 16 cores respectively, and both of these chips are boosting 800 MHz more than their predecessors, at 5.6 for the 7900X and 5.7 for the 7950X. And while the 7900X launches at an identical $549 price tag compared to previous, the 7950X has a $100 price reduction compared to the launch price of the 5950X, which I am extremely happy to see, given inflation around the world. But their TDPs did also increase too, from 105 watts to 107, making me really interested to know how hot they get. Speaking of, apparently Zen 4 has 62% lower power at the same performance compared to a 5950X, which seems to be an architectural average compared to a single SKU for some reason but also 49% more performance at the same power compared to Zen 3. However, the thing that impressed me the most in the CPU lineup is something AMD didn't even mention. Of course, they will dynamically boost based on thermal and power constraints, but each of the new Zen 4 CPUs have a base clock increase greater than one gigahertz compared to their Zen 3 counterparts, which should greatly benefit multi-threaded workloads. And AMD states that on average in creative tasks, the 7950X outperforms the 5950X by a staggering 40%. And compared to Intel's 12900K in V-Ray, 62% faster at 47% better performance per watt, making it almost twice as efficient. And that seems to be another highlight for this generation, performance at lower power targets. Compared to Zen 3, the new generation increases 65 watt TDP performance by 74%. And if we get anything close to that for even lower power targets, we may see some extremely powerful and efficient Zen 4 laptops or budget-friendly Ryzen 3 CPUs, which are yet to be announced. But to get those impressive numbers, you're going to need a whole new platform and maybe a GPU. Let's talk about that. So implementing new technologies like DDR5 and PCI Express 5.0 has come at a cost. A whole new platform. Yes, your current CPU will not work with the upcoming X670 Extreme, X670, B650 Extreme, or B650 motherboards. And even if they were architecturally compatible, the socket design isn't. AMD are advancing to the new 230 watt capable AM5 socket and moving away from a PGA design to LGA similar to all of Intel CPUs over the last decade. This benefits users by making the CPU much better at withstanding drops compared to current generation Zen 3, but the motherboard much more susceptible to pin damage. And I do prefer this, on the basis that your CPU is likely going to be more expensive than your motherboard, which AMD states will start at $125. And AMD are committing the AM5 socket to a lifespan of at least 2025, so hopefully we will continue to see the outstanding socket support from AMD, with the potential to upgrade your CPU after several generations. But the big question that people had is cooler compatibility. And I can confirm that AM4 coolers will work with AM5 motherboards, which will come in four different flavors. The X-Series boards covering the X670 and X670 Extreme will be released in September and are designed with the highest power delivery and overclocking support for both CPU and memory. However, while both get PCI Express 5.0 storage, only the Extreme variant will have 5.0 lanes for graphics and other add-in cards. But that likely won't be an issue for quite some time. PCI Express 4.0 has only just made its way into graphics. B650 and B650 Extreme boards will come out one month later, in October, with a very similar setup. Both will feature PCI Express 5.0 for storage, but only the Extreme variant will implement it for graphics. But all of the new motherboards will feature AMD Expo technology, expanding XMP and DOCP. This allows for extended profiles for memory overclocking and increased performance, which AMD states can increase gaming performance by up to 11% at 1080p, with data rates reaching 6,400 mega transfers per second at launch. And just when we thought it was all over, we got a sneak peek at RDNA 3. It, it's very pretty. But it's also meant to be a performance beast. AMD states that RDNA 3 will be using chiplets from TSMC's 5 nanometer process, delivering more than 50% performance per watt compared to current generation RDNA 2, and showed it running with Lies of P at 4K with a 7950X CPU. But AMD were very careful not to give anything away. What we're looking at is a yet to be released game no one else can test with no FPS information or any other data. This really could be demanding or just a breeze for a GT 1030. We just don't know. But with the fastest CPUs in the world coming in just shy of two months and RDNA 3 performance still set to be a game changer, I'm personally excited to see how Intel and Nvidia will retaliate because they will retaliate and won't be letting AMD advance past them without a fight. And you can bet that I'll be covering those two. So get subscribed, turn on notifications and make sure that you don't miss my content on those or at least check out another video before you do. And remember guys, a share and a like is always appreciated and I hope you have 
an amazing day.